Mr. Omar is ready and he can tell us in terms of CrossQ's role in the 11th EDF project by giving us a background of the project and some of the countries that are benefiting. Mr. Omar. Thanks very much, sir. Are you hearing me now? Mr. Williams? No, no. Testing, testing. We, we are hearing you now. Oh, great. Yeah. So, CrossQ is the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality. It is owned by 50 bureaus of standards in region and the 15 chief executive officers sit on the board of directors of CrossQ. CrossQ's role is to seek project resources from the international and regional donor committee, structure that into quality infrastructure development projects, and then execute that through the member states' national bureau of standards. In this way, we bring additional resources and systems and work methods to the 15 bureaus of standards in the region that ordinarily they will not be able to access by themselves as a single entity. And that's the value that cross you could add in that it's a cooperative arrangement of the bureaus working together to partner with international and other regional agencies to structure projects that can be executed in all the member states in different ways and according to their needs. Um, so right now, CDB has used CrossQ as the project manager to implement a national quality policy incentives and help with the metrology development or measurement development of the laboratory, as well as on the same project to develop the metrology laboratories of Dominica and Barbados. And we're very glad to play a facilitative role, not only as a project manager for those resources to help those three member state bureaus of standards, but also to, to help in the quality infrastructure development of the countries. So that's, that's the role we currently play. And in respect of the national quality policy in particular in regards of St. Kitts. In 2018, CrossQ developed a regional quality infrastructure development policy that was passed at the Council of Trade and Economic Development in 2018, which comprises all the ministers of trade in the region. And they passed this regional quality infrastructure development policy that they hoped that member states would adapt or adopt in their own way to guide the national quality infrastructure development in their countries. Since 2018, we have managed to, to develop a number of projects with different development partners. And St. Kitts and Nevis is the 12th of the 15 member states to now nationalize this regional CARICOM policy to, for the development of quality infrastructure. So this is definitely one CARICOM policy that has got implemented, and we just have three more member states to go. And in development of this national quality policy, MISO Partner has partnered with us in about four or five member states now to, to nationalize this regional policy. And that's a wonderful achievement by MISO Partners because in each country, they really help to customize the principles and the tenets and the recommendations in the regional quality policy. So we have a nice consistency running across a number of member states. And this national quality policy that is built out of the regional quality policy approved by CARICOM gives clear direction as to how um, the Ministry of International Trade and the Bureau of Standards can further work with quality infrastructure institutions to develop and grow the whole elements of standards in the country and the use of standards to facilitate trade and imports. The national quality policy also guides the development of your measurement infrastructure 
pressure, temperature, mass, weight, those kinds of things. It sets calibration standards and verification standards and legal standards for that. And your national quality policy also guides the Bureau and, and the Ministry as to how to inspect, test, and certify goods and services against quality standards when they are produced in your country or used in your country. And finally, the national quality policy will also help to educate a wide range of stakeholders as to what's the important role of the Bureau of Standards in helping to promote quality, not only as an enabling tool for businesses, but also as a strategic um, tool for businesses in your country, because quality is not only a production process issue, but it's also a business strategy in its own right, helping to differentiate your products and services at the end of the day for competitive value added to the end customer. So I've sought to give you an overview as to what CrossQ is in terms of an agglomeration of the working of the 15 bureaus of standard and uh, help you see that CrossQ really tries to get regional projects that no single bureau could get by themselves and then we implement that through the various bureaus of standards and in respect of introducing or working or developing the, Car the CARICOM approved regional quality policy we now have 12 member states including St. Kitts nationalizing that policy for quality infrastructure development and that's quite an achievement of a CARICOM policy we think and we thank MISO partners for helping us on at least five of those projects so far. Mr. 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 Omar, how is the regional quality policy document really guiding these national quality policies? The regional quality policy sets a consensus-driven vision as to what is the definition of quality, or what is the definition of quality infrastructure tools to help the public sector and the businesses promote quality in their country and therefore develop a quality conscious culture in the public sector, civil society, and in businesses. So we have a harmonized vision now in the region as to what is quality, what is quality infrastructure, and we have that cascaded into common objectives of how to achieve that quality. We have also in the regional policy policy identified four mechanisms to achieve those objectives and the division. And one of those measures deals with how can we mobilize private sector to build quality more into their systems and their products. Another measure deals with how can we encourage the public sector to create an enabling environment for quality to grow in businesses, but also for the public sector, how can they introduce quality infrastructure components so that you get better services? The third mechanism for achieving the objectives that was consensus driven was a series of principles and practices of how we could grow and develop the bureaus of standards in each member state so that they could produce and supply the quality infrastructure tools required for the public sector and the private sector. And the last important measure in the regional quality policy dealt with how we can develop quality professionals like Julian, uh, Mr. Laplace and his team, and how we could share those people regionally with the knowledge that is being built up. So the regional quality policy has a collective and consensus driven vision, objectives, and measures as to how to grow and develop quality infrastructure in any member states in terms of principles and practices. So it brings a harmonization of belief and thought processes how to do that. Then each member state takes this regional policy and it applies it into formal processes and practices that then gets logged into your national quality policy. So your national quality policy is about processes and practices that brings the principles of the regional quality policy to life. 
And if everybody follows this common regional quality infrastructure principles and they bring it to life in their national quality policies, then you have an implementable CARICOM policy, and which is really good. And now we have 12 member states bringing into being the principles commonly agreed to about quality and quality infrastructure development in the region.